<laughs> so now we are here for our question and answer session. And um, let's see here. Boy, Jim, you guys really build a campfire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for the wall. Yeah. <laughs> So the first question is uh, for Brother Jim. It says, um, I'm interested to know if Jim's wife had Marcons from the mold. Also, what was the most beneficial thing that she did to get rid of mold toxicity, supplements, or the brain reprogramming with a DNRS? That's from someone on YouTube. Um, one of the... Uh... Uh, I think the biggest impact that she had was the uh, was uh, was first getting out of the house and and getting away from the uh, the mold. The number two uh, greatest impact was uh, was that DNRS to basically be with others who had the same problem and be able to calm her mind that, uh, that she was able to get back again to eating regular food because uh, it, it, you you get anxiety from 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 getting sick from it again, uh, even though you're out of the environment. And so that DNRS uh, uh, helped her quite, quite a bit. Uh, there were some uh, supplements, uh, detoxification supplements that, uh, but she never was able to take some, uh, some of them because her, she was so sensitive. She would, she would have panic attacks from that. And so um, even, even the, um, some okra tablets she, she had was to help with detoxification. She had, she had trouble with. So, so, but that was the, uh, I would say the main things was the, uh, was, was main thing is getting out of the environment, getting out of the moldy environment and, uh, and, and doing the remediation so she can get back in there, back in there again. Okay. Amen. Okay. Um, anybody else uh, thus far? That is the question that I have. Um, um, go ahead. Is someone talking? Um, so I just wanted to say that, um, regarding the next presentation, it will be from next week. It will be wilderness survival by brother Christopher Fisher. And again, it's going to be a series as well, just like how brother Jim did her, did his, um, topics and that, um, it will be a series on wilderness survival. So um, does anyone have a more question for Brother Don or Brother Jim? And again, we just want to thank Brother Jim for doing this presentation, sharing his personal story about mold. I know when we moved to the country, that was the, the first thing that people kept, us kept on telling us mm -hmm. to test for mold because our, our cabin has been abandoned for 10 years. So, okay. Sharon, so, there was a question in the in the Zoom chat that uh, okay. people on YouTube and Facebook can't see, but so okay. uh, I'll I'll paraphrase it, and that was that uh, would there they had heard some sermons that had given the idea there would be phases uh, within the times of trouble, and uh, for those that weren't here for the last uh, presentation. Um, I, I believe there are three phases to the time of trouble, three, three different times of trouble. There's, there's the little time of trouble when you can't buy or sell that goes from the Sunday law to the close of probation. Then there is the great time of trouble, which goes after uh, when the plagues start until the death decree. And then the death decree is when we flee to the mountains, and that's the Jacob's time of trouble until the deliverance. So those are, in my belief, my understanding, the three phases. But there's also within those an increasing intensity. So, for instance, the little time of trouble, the way I picture it, is I think the first part, the first Sunday law is, is not going to be religious. It's going to be the saving Mother Earth, uh, you know, global warming and all that stuff. And so we'll, we'll, we'll save the earth by having Sunday off and shut the stores down and don't travel and all that. And, and then it will, over time, it'll evolve into more and more pressure, more and more religious, more and more, you know, mark of the beast like, 
And so, yes, it, to answer the question, I believe it's, it's progressive even within the individual times of trouble. Amen. Thank you for that. Okay, sitting at Jesus' feet. Um, do you have a question? I do. Uh, kind of comment and question in one. Um, for Brother Don. 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 Yep, Don. Yes. Um, read the time when the death decree, the death decree will be made. I'm thinking that it's going to be similar to, <clears throat> pardon me, the three Hebrew boys. When the decree, the death decree was made, that's the time that Michael stood up for them, right? So are you saying that the death decree will be made and then we will run to the mountains? So, I mean, if persons would be in prison, then they would get to kill them, right? But that's uh, not the impression I get. I'm thinking that as soon as the de death decree is made, is given, ordered, that um, that's when Michael is going to stand up. Can you clarify that? Um, we're going to talk about Michael standing up in the next session specifically. Uh, but it's my understanding that the uh, Michael standing up is, um, uh, excuse me, my battery on my laptop is getting low. I got to move and plug it in. So hold that thought. Um, Michael standing up is, Ellen White clarifies that it's the close of probation. It's when um, the uh, Jesus changes from being in uh, as our intercessor to uh, becoming uh, King of King and Lord of Lords. And so that begins the uh, time of trouble uh, in terms of the general or a great time of trouble with the plagues. So um, Michael standing up is my understanding. And again, we'll talk about that next week that is when um, probation closes and it's over, and so the plagues start going. And then fleeing to the mountains, I believe, is when there's a death decree, which I originally thought there were two times of trouble, with uh, the little time of trouble, and then the close of probation, and then Jacob's time of trouble when we flee to the mountains. But if you read Great Controversy, the chapter called The Time of Trouble, um, and you read it really carefully, there's a sequence. And I believe that that about the end of plague two or three is when the death decree gets implemented. Because prior to that, when the plagues first start going, uh, the wicked don't realize that the saints aren't being affected by the plagues. And so when they see that, uh, then, then they say, well, let's get rid of them. And so they do the death decree. And then we flee to the mountains is my, my belief on that. And we, and we did a study on that, and you can look in the video uh, videos in the past and get more information or you contact me. Amen. Thank you so much, sister, for that question. And with that being said, I just wanted to say that we are having, an, again, a series uh, starting next week regarding how long will the time of trouble be? And this is an in-depth uh, Bible prophecy study on Daniel 12. Um, it, the first part... Part one will be hands up. Part two, heaven's book. Part three, it is done. Part four, the special resurrection. Part five, knowledge shall be increased. Part six, multiple applications in Bible prophecy. Part seven, three and a half years in the Bible. And then part eight, no more prophecy and so forth. So again, um, if you missed our previous studies, uh, please uh, check uh, our YouTube channel on, or also Brother Don's um, website, uh, preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com. And I just posted the links um, if you want to connect with us with our different social media platform. So you will know when we will be having our meetings. Okay, with that being said, it's, uh, it's time to wrap up. It's 10 o'clock. Um, real quick, I just wanted to say thank you again, Brother Jim, 
for spending this three, you know, three different topics on, on mold and we will miss you. Um, Brother Christopher is here and he will be discussing the practical topics next week regarding um, how to survive in the wilderness. Okay, so stay tuned. So with that being said, let's uh, close with a word of prayer. Brother Jim, would you like to close with a word of prayer? Sure. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, like thank you so much for this time we all have together to uh, fellowship and share information of our experiences and and also to uh, be watchful for the soon return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, be, uh, be ready, not only spiritually and mentally, but also physically too, and help others to prepare for that great day before it's, there's no more time left. Help us be lights to those around us. Help us, Lord, be like Jesus, that they may see Christ in us, and that heaven may be full when you send your son Take us all home in his holy and mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Amen. God bless you all and have a blessed week. Until next time.